Jackie said, I'm going to talk about how you can use a storybook to test your Angular applications. Um, see if this works. Okay, I changed by hand. Uh, my name is Christopher Holder. I am also a performance engineer at Pushbase and a trainer and consultant. I also really love working there, which uh, seems like a normal pattern. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, my Twitter is at Chris P. Holder. So you can text me there, and I'm happy to answer any additional questions. You already had two wonderful talks that actually explain what a design system is and how to do like a reusable design system. I'm not going to go deeply into that. The only thing I want to say is a design system usually includes a lot more than just like a UI component library. It includes style, like style guides and principles. I'm not talking about that. Here, when I say design system, I very literally mean tokens, components, and patterns. So a very dumb component with inputs and outputs. And in particular, I want to tell you how you can use Storybook to actually improve this design system uh, and how you can use it to test and document it. Um, design, uh, Storybook itself is a workshop for your design system. When I say a workshop, I don't just mean like a place that you go to. What I actually mean is a location where you can test your components, where you can develop these components, and that you can do it in a particular way. Um, it is an open source uh, software, an open source library that is very well supported and used by a lot of really large companies. A lot of these companies also open source their design systems, or at least part of their design systems. So if you feel like using it, these, uh, this is a very good place to take inspiration on how to build a design system. You can actually look at very large design systems, like the uh, Lightning design system uh, from Salesforce, go through it, get some inspiration, and that. And why do they use it? Why did they choose to use uh, the uh, storybook for that? And at least I think it's because of three main reasons. It's because of isolation, documentation, and testing. Three things that Storybook really shines at. I'm going to show you a quick example of a uh, design system with Storybook. Essentially, uh, I'm able to deploy a design system where you can be able to see all of the different things that my application has. You can see that I have tokens. You can also see that I have components uh, and some patterns. All right. The last pattern that I just showed you is the one that I'm going to be focusing on. It is a star rating component. And essentially, I want to show you with this example um, how you can use it to do these three things. The first one is development in isolation or testing in isolation, or just isolating the components. As you're able to just pull out uh, the storybook and look at this one unique component without having to build the application and check and de develop it in one specific place, you're able to have it nicely isolated to only focus on that one component. And then we have what I like to call automagical documentation. It's not automatic, but it's very, very close to automatic. It essentially will just generate a snippet that shows you how you can use this component, uh, and you can add a nice little description to what its inputs are, and um, you can also go ahead and write down stories. Not, not like his stories. His stories are absolutely amazing, uh, but stories that describe the different states of these components. But not only can you write this documentation as such, you can actually interact with it. You can go into the component and actually click on the controls to see how the component would change if you were to change, for example, the show rating or a different number uh, for the different ratings, right? I can go ahead and show you really quickly how by just clicking around, I can actually interact with the stories and see what the difference is there. And finally, visual regression testing. So every time that you document one of these stages, right? You document how it looks when you have five stars or when there's a specific uh, input to it, you are actually creating a test. So as you document your code or as you test your code, you're just creating documentation. So it works as a single cycle. And better yet, 
you can go ahead and use it inside of your CI so that every time you make a change, we can check all of this history you have, all of the different stories that you've written, uh, and check if there's been any changes. Better yet, get someone to review them, show you a difference between the two, and uh, get someone to approve the actual change before you're allowed to merge it. I have a nice little example PR to show you how you can use this. Uh, and in particular, you might be able to see that there is a mistake. Can you catch what the error is here? It is not that The Godfather is marked that's five, even though it's one of the best movies ever. Totally true. It is actually that five out of ten is two stars, when it should probably be two and a half. Right? So let me go ahead and open up an MR where I have fixed that issue. Let's see if you guys can see this fun. I've written a beautiful description with a screenshots that explains everything that you need to know about this component. Uh, fixes five out of 10. And I don't feel like I need to write more. And the reason is because it actually is documented very well when I go ahead and open it here. I'm gonna open the link that I already have open because I don't trust the Wi-Fi. Uh, you never know. Um, so you can see that inside of that PR, there is one change. Only one of the different states that I've recorded one of these different stories has shown a visual change. You can go ahead and open that again, and so we can open it here, but again, don't trust the Wi-Fi. Uh, never trust the Wi-Fi. And we can go ahead and see what this change is. The only change that I was able to identify by taking a screenshot of all of the different stories that I have is that in the case where we have uh, five uh, stories, right, so five uh, rating, it decided to change it from the original one, which only had two, to two and a half. And if I like the change, I can just go ahead and click on approve, and then the PR is now mergeable. But of course, this is not all that you can change. This is not all that you can test. Um, the other thing that you can test that is very useful is interactions. You can test out different user interactions between these components uh, and how these components are supposed to react and look at different stages of this interaction. Writing interaction tests feels very natural. Uh, you're essentially writing a play function inside of this documentation and you have different steps as what would happen. You also get the ability to walk through it inside of the code. So you can actually see how you're walking through the component uh, and interact with it and play inside of the documentation itself. So if we were to go into, for example, the toggle component, we can go into the documentation and check on the interaction. But maybe we wanna see what happens at these different stages. So we can go ahead and click through and see that here, when the user would have clicked on dark mode, it would have changed it to dark mode, and it will assert that it is in dark mode. Maybe I need to scroll up a little so you can see. And we can keep going, and it changes it back to light mode. So essentially, we're able to use the already deployed storybook to be able to test out this interaction live. The next thing that we can use uh, is accessibility testing. And accessibility is becoming a more and more important topic. It's always been very important, but it's becoming more common to talk about it, possibly because we might get sued in the next couple of years with our applications. Uh, it is now becoming a legal requirement, but it's also very important to take into account people who have disabilities, uh, for example, visual disabilities uh, or cognitive disabilities. Under the hood, what it's actually doing is it is using AXA, uh, which is the gold standard for accessibility testing. Um, and it will go through all the common accessibility uh, issues that you might be able to find, but it's still not perfect. It only manages to get about 57% of the violations that you would typically catch within an application. And of course, uh, you can run this both inside of the storybook itself or inside of your pipeline to be able to see how this affects uh, your application and the particular components that are being developed. So we can take a look, for example, at the accessibility issues that we have here, and we can see what it actually tells us. And it's telling us, for example, that there is a moderate violation where there should have been a landmark role 
uh, assigned to one of the components, something that I would have very easily missed. But sometimes it can also tell us things that we're not sure whether or not we need to take care of. For example, it's saying that there is a contrast issue here. And I think it's very easy to see it, uh, that it, it is very visible. So we don't necessarily need to take care of some of the issues that are marked there. Sometimes it can have false positives. And of course, since you can run this inside of your pipeline, you can actually use it within your development cycle. You can actually go ahead and add some code and then you run it inside of the pipeline and it shows you there's a violation and you prevent someone from merging something that is actually going to cause a accessibility violation. Finally, I would also like to uh, show you an additional tool. I know that here I am mostly talking about visual regression testing, but uh, as I said, I am a performance engineer and this is an additional tool that you can use to measure uh, performance of your applications, not only during the initial navigation, but actually at runtime. So that would mean that you would be able to measure navigation flows, interactions, and snapshots of different moments within a user interaction or a user journey inside of your application. If you're interested in taking a look at it, uh, we have some great documentation on it. Check out user flow at Pushbase user flow. Uh, and it will also provide additional measurements for SEO and performance uh, and accessibility on your application. Lastly, I would like to leave you with a thought that when you have a large complex application, it is very possible that you make a minor change. You change a token somewhere, you change some very simple functionality. And this simple functionality will cause a major regression down the line. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Chris Holder. If you have any questions, feel free to text me at Chris B. Holder.